Dr. Cohen, what I'd like to think about now is uh, mTOR and how mTOR changes with age. And uh, to kind of frame what I'm thinking about, so th there seems to be a tension between inhibiting mTOR, which helps extend lifespan in a lot of animal models, and it's and uh, it may well help humans as well. Uh, but also, we need to maintain muscle mass, and we need to remain fit and uh, avoid frailty. And so that kind of implies that we still need to be able to build muscle, which requires mTOR to be activated. And so what are your thoughts on kind of like the best, um, I guess the protocols, the best protocols for uh, using mTOR to extend lifespan and how much should we activate it and how much should we try and inhibit it? Well, I would, I think let's, let's, let's take that statement, which has multiple pieces to it. So we know mTOR is critical for energy sensing, you know, and we know that the body needs to be yin and yang, right? It needs to grow. It needs to repair. It needs to recover. Um, and that involves sort of switching off mTOR and perhaps AMPK, you know, sort of sensing and, and taking the body and cleaning house, going into an autophagy state. Um, we also know that there's health span and lifespan. So, you know, those are overlapping perhaps, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're different ball games. So mm -hmm. um, with mTOR, uh, you know, the, the way I like to envision is we were watching football last night and I don't watch football very often. My son was sharing us football with his Hungarian girlfriend and I was just looking at the players and it's been years. It's like, the average size of the offensive lineman in the NFL is 6'5", 330 pounds. I mean, incredible. Yes, there's more people on the planet, but that is an mTOR. <laughs> that is an mTOR response, you know, even in baseball as well. It's like the size of people has grown. Um, when we're younger, we, we're, we have mTOR signals. When we have more calories, mTOR is driven. The flip side to that is if you keep mTOR on more regularly, right? At some point you can't grow anymore. The cells have done their job and they go into the state of hyperfunction, right? And anyone, you know, really wanting to, to dig deeper in that, read some of Mikhail Blagoskloni's papers. Um, I really enjoy the way he writes. Um, it's very practical as well as sort of it's not your typical science paper he's he's more postulating theories and ideas you know based on his knowledge so he talks about hyperfunction and cells going to a state of senescence and and that process is what leads to disease and it could be cancer or heart disease or vascular disease or metabolic disease and so forth and those dysfunctions or dysregulations caused by mTOR and being on, you know, he believes, and I, I believe as well, since it's 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 a large part of it, leads to early disease, right? And it leads to dysfunction and loss of physical function and earlier death. It's unclear to me um, in humans, you know, is rapam or let's get away from rapamycin. Does mTOR restriction or cycling, which we can talk about, is that going to expand lifespan? You know, it, it, theorizing that the human wall is maybe 115 to 120. No one's lived longer than that, no matter what they've done, right? Maybe there's reports of, but, but in essence, we don't have any truly documented cases of people living more than 120 and with you know, billions of people on the planet, we, we should see more than that. And there, there's reasons for that. And that's probably beyond our conversation here. Is mTOR cycling going to get us past 120? I don't think so, right? You know, based on my current knowledge and speaking with other people, it, I think it gets more of us to 100, 110, so forth, because we don't fall 
um, victims to cancer or we don't fall victims to vascular disease or cognitive ailments or even immune senescence. Those are the four killers or even falling. So that would be you know, another one. So think of mTOR as that energy sensing. What we want to try to avoid is that hyperfunction state, as Mikhail speaks about. And um, our understanding based on calorie restriction and fasting seems to be that if you can cycle, right, and, and you can use intuition, the body tends to like change, right? It likes to have a hormetic response. So whether it's exercise or sauna or cold or fasting or holding your breath or, or whatever it might be, the more change um, that we're exposed to, the more resilient the body is. And at that resilience ultimately is what we're shooting for. We want to be resilient as we get older. And, you know, I, I was just alluding to, it's like uh, one of our holiday events was swinging a baseball bat. Or we went to a, played mini golf and swinging a baseball bat. I haven't done that a bunch of years, but like, I did okay. Like my reaction was good and I felt good. It's like, okay, you know, 60 something, I still was able to hit the ball quite well. I was like, okay, I hadn't lost that re resilience hand eye. And I, I wasn't thinking directly about that, but you know, doing things differently. And, you know, from the highest level, we know that whether, you know, as you get older, it's, it's the consistent rut, which we begin to lose function. So hopefully that, that gives a sense of where mTOR is. Um, so with regard to, you know, more specifics on that question is cycling on and off. You know, we talked about that um, previously, um, we can't just fast all the time, right? Because you wind up like looking out of someone out of the biosphere. If you go back and look at Roy Walford's, you know, pictures coming out of the biosphere, or looking at you know, even you know the endurance runners who are really really thin, they become catabolic, and you know, one could debate. You know, do you have a life? Do you have a better health span than someone who is you know a sprinter and you know there's people who have analyzed olympic athletes and says the pole vault pole vaulters live longer than the high jumper you know it's, i'm not sure how much the difference that's that's making but ultimately you know until we truly figure out the interventions that take us past you know 100 110 which is my vision um how do you stay functional what what's you know you want muscle, you want to be able to balance, you want to be able to be strong and, and do what you want to do. So you need to weigh, weigh that as well. And, you know, as we we're talking as well, there's the next five years or so, there's some dramatic things probably coming on board. So let's, let's stay healthy. Did that answer that question? Mm. Um, or did I? So, well, yes. Uh, Okay. But I guess the answer was cycling, right? So, so we need to cycle. We, yes. we have times of growth, and then we have times of, of um, kind of retrain, retrenchment. When we are young, late nights and minimal sleep seem to be no problem at all. But when we get older, they have a big drain on our energy and mental focus. Now my wife and I prioritize sleep like never before. And I found Magnesium Breakthrough very helpful for this. Especially during busy times, it helps me drift off faster keeps my sleep quality top notch. Unlike other magnesium supplements that might be giving you one or two forms of magnesium, Magnesium Breakthrough contains all seven forms of magnesium designed to calm your mind and help you fall asleep, stay asleep and wake up refreshed. Both my wife and I are happy to take Magnesium Breakthrough as part of our sleep routine. Support your mind and body with this all natural, gluten-free, soy-free, lactose-free, full spectrum magnesium supplement. Simply go to bioptimizers.com slash modern and use promo code modern10 during your checkout to save 10%. Thank you for your support. So if you were thinking about cycling, um, how would, I, I guess, how would you think about that? Uh, you know, what time, kind, of, kind of time scale? Is this weekly, monthly, daily? And, uh, and how do you cycle? Yeah, so 
there's lots of variations in in that realm. Um, there, there's a Russian physician who has a book out. It's called Carb Cycling. Um, actually, he's 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 a nominee or he has a team in the X Prize contest, and his concept is like three days a week. You know, three three days a week you're going higher carbohydrates and more strength and then four days a week you're doing more endurance and less i i think that's a bit hard and i i need to speak with him more about it i was um i i liked his his ideas and also ross pelton has wrote um pharmacology has, has talked about mTOR cycling as well mTOR switch in the past and what i found um, that seems to work better from a, um, a focus directive is at least a two to four weeks because um, you, you want to have enough time period to achieve a particular goal um, without suffering the consequences. So if one were to go into an anabolic phase, and consume more carbohydrates and consume more calories and perhaps less fat, right? But consume more protein and carbohydrates. Um, and they're being very physically active. The likelihood of getting any insulin sent, you know, resistance in that time period, that's going to be a long-term consequence is pretty low, right? You're not going to suffer in one month, any issues, especially if you're building um, and then cycling off, and it, it could be one month as well, going into a low calorie, um, or a lower calorie, uh, potentially lower protein, anabolic, I'm sorry, catabolic, not, not really catabolic, but more of a maintenance, because in that month of anabolic, you're going to put on fat, right? So you're going to put on fat, you're going to put on muscle. So the idea is, and this is through the old bodybuilding concepts, is put on muscle, put on fat and then cycle down. And now you're going to lose a little muscle, but you're going to lose more fat. So at the end of that two months, you have a net gain and then re repeat. And you keep repeating that until you hit a particular threshold. And, you know, and at some point you go, I'm good, right? At some point, you know, if you've achieved, I think none of, you know, I think when we're younger, I think especially men, we want to be big and have lots of muscle. But I think as you get older, you just want to be strong and functional. And you're mm -hmm. a little bit less concerned about what you look on the beach, per se. I mean, we want to, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. at some point you can maintain that. And then it, maybe it's it's just a two-week cycle. And that's all you need to do. Maybe it's you're doing as you're getting older and as mTOR is becoming more resistant perhaps and i think you'll be less likely to develop a resistance if you're cycling mm -hmm. all the time right um in the same thing with metabolic flexibility and the corollary, corollary here is someone who eats a bunch of carbohydrates and doesn't get active they become insulin resistant right and you then try to flip them and now they're eating protein and fat and they're trying to do a modified ketosis paleo they feel awful for a period of time, but then as the enzymes start switching over, as they become metabolically more efficient for protein and fats primarily, they feel better and blood sugar goes down and they don't need to eat all the time and their energy is consistent and their mood is consistent. But then if you stay that way, you know, there's, there's a good amount of people, a good percentage that find that if you gave them carbohydrates, and I see this a lot, I might fall into that as well. I would fail an oral, I, I might, I, I don't think I would because I eat a little bit more, but I would see people and I have fail a glucose tolerance test. You know, their insulin is tight, they're sensitive, there's no inflammatory markers, but you give them the same glucose load and their glucose is going to shoot up. Mm -hmm. so they become metabolically inflexible now to carbohydrates. And that's probably not a good thing either. Um, and so switching things up a bit is important because you're going to put yourself in, in a restrictive state 
and the body does better when it's more flexible and resilient. So switching on and off is important, you know, for overall health. So figuring out what your goals are, you know, do you want to maintain muscle? Do you want to gain muscle? Are you trying to lose body fat? Because you really can't do them all. What's your age? You know, mm-hmm. what, what's, you know, what specifically are you trying to achieve and then sort of titrate that protocol accordingly. But, you know, the key take home point is you can't do one all the way, you know, you can't be pressing mTOR off all the time, nor can you be, you know, pressing mTOR on all the time without suffering, you know, the sumo wrestlers and the offensive linemen are going to suffer consequences you know, due to that and due to age and illness. And that's clearly seen 